Well, good day everyone. Uh, thought I'd talk to you today. I've done a whole stack of testing today. Uh, this is only going to be a quick one. I've done a whole stack of testing today for formats for my A7S III, uh, the codecs that I can use. Uh, and it seems to be that one particularly is very, very suitable. So let me just sort of go through this quickly with you. Now this is a Pro AV uh, website. So I will leave the link for this down below so you can have a look. Uh, so there's three sort of major compressions. There's the XAVCS, uh, the XAVCS, CSI and the XAVCHS. Uh, the problem with this one down the bottom, the XAVCHS, which is uh, the best codec that's available on this camera, it is a H.265 codec, which is way too much for my computer to handle. Now I've got a Mac Pro, um, and it's a quite a beefy one, uh, but it is the 2013 model, so I can't complain. I mean, I've had great use out of it, but it can't handle a H.265 uh, format. It just skips all the time so it's skipping frames and it will warn you final cut will warn you uh, if it is skipping frames so i'm going to stay away from this uh, xavc hs until i get a newer computer and i'm waiting on apple to release new arm max uh, and i will probably then buy one of those and, and i think with the t2 chip uh, it probably will play those quite well because i have seen and i should test it myself uh, the ipads have been able to play the h265 formats uh, so i should test that but the one that I'm using is this XAVCSI format. It is a H.264 format, but it's 10 bit 422 uh, and it's uh, 240 megabits per second. It does go up to 600 uh, if you're using things like SNQ or pushing it up uh, in your bit depth. But let me show you through here uh, how to set up uh, what I'm using. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm choosing the XAVCSI. And the great thing about this is it's a H.264 uh, uh, format as well. So it's very, very good on your computer. In fact, if you chose this XAVCHS, the camera actually warns you to say that you have to be in an environment that can edit that type of footage. So it's telling you that it is very, very inten processor intensive. So I use this XAVCSI. Uh, let me just scroll it out of here and there's two settings that you can use here there's 25p or 50 now I can use either one of these and it works great on my computer without any transcoding at all it's actually really good um, and I, I found there was no skipping of frames or anything so it's it's great and you'll also notice too that down the bottom here it's saying that this is 250 megabits it's 422 10-bit uh, and let me just come out of this um, the S and Q settings, uh, I can also uh, use 50p uh, and 100 frames per second. But with the S and Q settings, I do have to change it to um, ProRes. And so I do have to convert those files over to ProRes. So it looks like the way I'm going to probably use this camera, you know, for the meantime, until I get a, a newer computer that has an ARM type processor, I'm just going to use this um, XAVCI uh, format, which is the H.264 format, and that works very, very well. The footage looks beautiful, in fact. So I've tried Log and also HLG3, uh, and they work wonderful as well, uh, without skipping a beat on the computer, and that's with all the editing, adding LUTs and things like that. So it looks like the XAVCSI is a great format if you have an older type machine, uh, and until we get, say, computers, uh, well, obviously there's some window probably computers out there that you could use, but until we get on the Mac side of things, particularly uh, higher spec machines, I, I definitely would stay away from the 265 formats. Uh, the 264 seems to work very, very well. And in fact, I was very surprised how well it ran on this computer. Uh, if you have any questions about this, leave that down below uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.